Hello. I did this video. This is actually my second time to make this video. I made it made it in uh, Windows XP and Pro 8, and then I uploaded it to YouTube, and then the sound didn't work, so I'm redoing it. So I'm just going to do it in um, Pro 9. I did it in Pro 8 before, but uh, Pro 8 doesn't run all that great in Windows 7, so bear with me. <coughs> Get that cranking, and then we'll... Uh, do this butterfly roof thing. This video will probably be better than the other one that didn't that the sound didn't work on anyway. So I'll just delete it when I finish this one, <clears throat> and then live the rest of my life happily. So it is hoped. Okay. Now we'll draw a box. <clears throat> Since this is a roof tutorial, I'm not going to worry about the wall types and setting defaults and that sort of thing, which I normally harp on. But let's just build some roofs. <clears throat> and the point of that is uh, merely to get a center line here. That's the only reason I did that. I'm going to hit F2 on my keyboard to go into CAD tools. And then we'll snap a line on that center point. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to delete these roofs. I just did that as a shortcut to get a center line. Now with a butterfly roof, you know, the roof's baseline <clears throat> is in the center, and they they uh, angle up as you go to the exterior wall. So, uh, again, I'm going to go back to uh, <clears throat> architectural tools. <clears throat> Select the roof tool icon, and probably you want to set your pitch and so forth, but for a t tutorial, I'm just going to go with the pitch that's there and the other settings and so forth. And I, <clears throat> I got that line there to snap, that snap cursor, so I'm going to, in the roof tool, <clears throat> active, excuse me, uh, I'll snap to that line, I'll go in the direction I want it to slant, and left click, and then I'm going to do that again in the other direction. <clears throat> Just to be fastidious, I'm going to set the uh, rip overhang at 18. Again, that's just arbitrary. If you're building something, then you know what you want and you can set it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I should have had some water before I started. Sorry. Now I'm going to set the uh, side overhangs, in this case, minus 18. We'll snap snap this one to that. You can see it's measuring to the outside. That's the reason I'm using a minus value. <clears throat> now these roof planes, something I ought to point out is um, in the roof dialog structure tab uh, sorry over here, yeah. Yeah, this is 9. I forgot. I was thinking it was 10. And 9, we've got the ceiling height is at 9 feet. <clears throat> and the roof planes are going to, even though I'm drawing them manually, they pick up that they should set themselves height-wise at 9 feet. And you can see this dashed line here that's appeared. That's automatic. And I should point out what that's for and what layer it's on. It's on a layer called Walls Beams. You can't select it. Uh, where is it? Walls. Maybe they changed the layer name. Let me see. Is it under beams? No. Well, I hate it when I get caught like this, especially doing a video tutorial, but nevertheless. Attic. Foundation invisible. No looking normal. Well, okay, it vanished out of version 9. But what this uh, dashed line represents is that the roof planes are encroaching into the ceiling of, of the room. See, like that's where that dashed line is right there, where that roof plane's coming in. <clears throat> so when I join these roofs, using the Join Roof Planes tool, then that line goes away because now they're no longer intruding into the house. Well, maybe a little. 
I think um, I'm going to see what that figure is. What is that? What the heck does that say? Uh, okay, let me turn up show line weight. Makes everything so dark you can't, it's hard to see. <clears throat> I'm going to use move this virtual point up here where I intended it to go in the first place. Okay, it's three and five eighths inches from where this bottom of the roof plane is to where it probably ought to be. I'm going to move it up four inches. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to select this roof plane. I think I can do that in nine. Yeah, I think I did. I've got both of those roof planes selected. I left-clicked on this one, pressed the shift key, and then left-clicked on that one. And I can use this tool here called Transform Replicate down here in the Edit Toolbar. <clears throat> and I want to move those two roof planes up. That's D Z delta. That's up uh, four inches. And now it's out of the ceiling. See that bottom of the roof. I mean, you, you want to work this out so that this, stru this is structurally correct, but... I'm not doing an engineering class here. I'm just showing you how you can move, manually move these roof planes around. But we have the butterfly uh, roof condition here. I'm going to close this view. And we'll do an interior camera view demonstrating that the roofs are not are no longer protruding into the ceiling. We've got a flat ceiling. I guess you could make this... Uh, uh, like that and put in some skylights and so forth if you wanted to. It's up to your design thing. The thing, main thing that's wrong with this roof, kind of roof system is that it's guaranteed to be a, a roof maintenance problem uh, because water's going to collect here and water being a, a kind of a universal solvent will find a way through any any flashing or a roof system eventually. And that's, uh, that's probably why there's no tutorials on how to do this kind of roof because nobody in the right mind uses it. But if you want to use it, it's okay. So that's basically it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's very easy to do in uh, Pro, in anything but Pro or Chief. Uh, like Kat said, you would have to uh, create two rooms and, and that sort of thing and make a shed roof and a shed roof. But in Pro, it's, it's quite easy and straightforward. <clears throat> so that's about it. Thanks for your kind attention.